Hey guys, it's me, Javier. We are live today with the treasure hunter himself, Dr. Michael Torres. Oh, actually, you're on this side of the nice screen. How's it going, man? Oh, another day in paradise. Yeah? Yeah. It, you are one of the most fascinating people that I've ever talked to, and, and one of the the people that I keep getting messages about, like, you know, usually I do a story and then it's over, but I still get messages about you. I mean, I've gotten messages from people you went to school with or like college and somebody who thought your baby mama, I don't know, you know, <laughs> that's a new one. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah. Why, why do you think people are so fascinated with you, man? I, I, I have no idea. Honestly, I don't think I'm that interesting. <laughs> Well, first of all, you wear a fedora. Is it is it a fedora? Is that yeah. technically the technical term? I'm not a hat expert. Yeah, it's a fedora. <laughs> I've always worn them. Yeah. I, hey, you know. it's a good look, man. You can pull it off. And and behind you, who's that? That is a city portrait of Napoleon as a second lieutenant. That is that's an original. That's very few seated portraits of Napoleon around, and I actually got my hands on one. That's awesome. And and you were showing me earlier all these artifacts that are in your room. And you say you have something that's older than Christ. Yes, I have Roman and Fora that is about 11 years um, older than Christ. Do, uh, do you want me to show you? Yeah, yeah, sure. Why not? If it's not going to ruin your setup. Nah, nah, it's fine. So it's this big vase, right? Yep. That, it, that, so that predates that predates barrels. So this was the original cargo container of the ancient world. And they would sit them in, sh in holes of ships and they were shaped in such a way that they'd actually locked in together. So if you look yeah. at the top, they're made to lock in. So it was a sturdy and careful way to transport goods. Most likely this probably either carried olive oil, it may have carried grain or wine. I, um, I actually fished that off the Aegean Sea at an old Roman yeah. wreck. Yeah. You know, what, what I want to focus on today is, you know, we had four episodes on you and I don't do four episodes on just anybody, but even four episodes, we didn't get it to half of the things that you've told me about during our conversations. You know, we, we've spoken many times and right. each time you have this fascinating story to tell. And, you know, one of the ones that, you know, and we all know you for like on the show, you know, we talked about the this thing which is the peruvian death mask that right. that uh, was famously talked about in the podcast but right i don't know if people actually ever got to see it you know it's a podcast but tell, tell us about the mask itself and what do you think it's made out of and all that well we know what it's made of we've actually run tests on the metal it's it has it's mainly copper but it has uh a lot of iridium in it it has about 11 and what what is iridium where, where does that come from Iridium is a non-terrestrial metal, so it, it came from most likely a meteorite. So there is uh, large deposits in Bolivia of iridium. So it either was unintentionally put into the mask because of where, because they're associated with alluvial deposits of gold. So it, it either came from there and it was an unintentional addition to the mask, or they saw a meteorite come down and they thought it was a gift from the gods. So they had taken it and pounded it into a mask, uh, basically a, a crown jewel of a pre-Incan civilization. It, uh, awesome. In the middle, what you're seeing is the likeness of their the Panandian creator god. Uh, it's called, his name is Viracachu. So if, if it, the stories are very similar to ours, they had a great flood Viracachu breathed life into giants and rocks. Um, is it's very similar, and there is a a, a pre-Incan town in Peru, uh, Tiwanaku, and the Gateway of the Sun is a massive monument that they have where, and the image of um, the image of Viracachu in in the Gateway of the Sun is almost identical. It's it's almost That's pretty cool. Yeah. I, and, and, you know, because of you, I've spoken to these professors and people who study this stuff. And it's really fascinating for me. Uh, yeah, that is a fedora, Chris, for <laughs> sure. It's genuine. No, but for me, uh, Peru is like the number one spot on my uh, on my bucket list, man. It's such a great place. Peruvian food is my favorite. Uh, it's 
the beach, the mountains. It's going to be awesome. But this mask of yours, right? Mm-hmm. This this thing that you were holding in your hand right there got you into a lot of trouble, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I had it looked at by archaeologists and I had it. I sent pictures of it over to Harvard. I sent pictures of it over to Columbia University and, and Tulane. And they all said the same thing. It's it's pre-Incan. It, I, Columbia, I said it was Moche. Uh, I, actually, Harvard and Columbia said most likely it was Moche. Uh, but we don't need to rehash uh, oh. Old controversies, but but we let's put a lid on this thing. So what happened? What happened with uh, your your battle with Seafarer? Where did that go? Cases dropped. They dropped the case. So, yeah. but that doesn't mean you're you're scot free, right? You've talked to me about some things um, before we get into all the other discoveries. Uh, it, you reminded me about some of your other troubles that you've had, uh, the places that you're not welcomed in <laughs> <laughs> Turkey or or uh, Georgia. Georgia. But yeah, we'll talk about Turkey too, because we I don't think we got into that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was uh I was expelled from Turkey. <laughs> um who isn't, right? Yeah, right. Uh, so I we were a buddy in my a buddy of mine and me and I myself Italy, and uh we had a little bit too much to drink. No, excuse me, we were in Greece. We were in Greece and we had a little too much to drink. And we decided we wanted to go see the Hagia Sophia, which the Hagia Sophia is a Basilica that's now a mosque that was uh, built by Emperor Constantine, and down the street from the from the Hagia Sophia is the old Roman district, the, the the bar district, and under these bars they have old Roman catacombs or Byzantine catacombs. I had a little too much to drink, for I, I somehow got into the catacombs. Some stuff may have come up missing, I don't know, uh, but uh, they didn't like me uh, doing that, so they uh, kicked me out. What about what about Georgia the state? Can we talk about that at all or no? Not. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed you dodged that, so maybe we shouldn't talk about that. But let's just say that uh, Michael's <laughs> exploration in Georgia didn't go so well. Let, let's move on to some other discoveries that that we didn't get to in the show. What's this thing that we're looking at right now? So that is an early 1800s luggage tag when. So I had discovered a Confederate blockade runner in Charleston Harbor, and not Harbor, uh, Charleston area vicinity, uh, out at sea, uh, and I found a lot of silver coins, uh, Confederate silver coins. They were all minted in New Orleans. They all predate 1864, and I found some British coins too that were thrown in the mix or earlier coins. So I assumed that the British were on that ship. But then I found the luggage tag and then I started doing research on the names, the places in, in England. Uh, and the the name is associated with a British intelligence officer that has ties to the HMS Terror. Now, I'm not saying this is the HMS Terror. The HMS Terror went down in the Antarctic when it was decommissioned. Uh, but th- this wreck and it's dated April 1815 which was the same well, in the same time period that the Treaty of Ghent was signed that ended the War of 1812. And, and this gentleman was associated with Brit- the British intelligence services. So to me, that tells me it, it seems like that was a clandestine mission that went awry because there's no record of a ship sinking in the vicinity of Charleston and Charleston Harbor during the War of 1812. So it, it went. It's kind of cool. Wreck. Well, what? Um, so there, there were some other things that this story is pretty cool. This was uh, Anne Bonny. Tell yep. me, tell us a little bit. Like you know, I know you're a hardcore history geek, but tell us a little bit of context about who Anne Bonny was and and what what you found. She, Anne Bonny. A, a lot of people associate her with one being one of the first transgender pirates of record. And she was a pirate queen. Uh, she was one of the few women, her and Mary Reed were one of the few women that actually went out and pirated the sea. She was, uh, she was born around, and, and there's, it's not agreed upon what year she was born, but roughly about 1700. She was born in Cork, Ireland. And she was born the bastard daughter of a, of a nobleman uh, that, who was already married. So, and her mother was actually the maid to William McCormick, who was her father. 
when the his when his family found out that he had fathered a child out of wedlock and you know, cheated on his wife, he fled to the colonies. He fled to Charleston, which was the the Carolina colony, and he started his own law practice, which eventually failed. And he went into he went into uh, the merchant uh, side of the law and actually started, you know. Anyways, so he he dropped his the Mick. Cormick, that he dropped the Mick off the name and came to Charleston as William Cormack. Him and Anne Bonnie lived in Charleston. He, again, he started his own law practice. And when she became of age, I think she stabbed her first person at like 13 years old. She stabbed one of the servant girls in her home. And, and that's kind of where all this started, her rebel pirate nature. I, I don't know how else to, she was a wild one. And, and when, what was it that, uh, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but what was it that you uh, found from Anne Bonny? I, I, so long story short, she flees Carolina after she marries James Bonny. She flees to Nassau. She, uh, James Bonny becomes a snitch for the English, snitching on pirates. Snitches get stitches. So she left him with a child left they had a child together she left him to go with calico jack and mary reed out to pirate out to pirate again she went out to sea her mary reed and calico jack had a three-way relationship together and both mary reed and and bonnie were pregnant at the same time with calico jack's child now they had just attacked a merchant vessel full of gold so the entire crew got drunk and then they were captured like they got caught out in the open by British Marines. The British Marines board, the, the men were too drunk to fight. The only two to fight off the British Marines were Anne Bonnie and Mary Reed. Only ones to fight. So they're captured. Girl power. Yeah, right. Yeah, it was it's pretty impressive actually. She was she was hardcore. She uh she's impressive. But she they're on trial in Jamaica. They both plead their bellies, which means they're both pregnant. And under English law, you can't hang a pregnant woman. So she that should be under everybody's law. <laughs> I'd, I'd be running and I was pregnant all the time. Right, right. I get a jail free card. I'm done. <laughs> so there, Mary uh, Mary Reed dies of either dengue fever or yellow fever in prison. But Anne Bonnie's released, and we think her father used his political sway to get her out. When she leaves Jamaica, she disappears to history. She just disappears. No one, no one, history does not hear from her again. Well, my team and I, we may know where she is. We know she got married when she came back to Charleston. We, we know who she married. We know she had six more children. And we know what name she's buried under. And we know. Oh, really? Are you going to share any of this stuff? Or is this like a future? Uh, it's future. But that you're going to have. Everyone thinks it's Charleston, not Charleston. She's not buried in Charleston. And she's not married, and she's not buried under Anne Bonnie or Anne Cormack. Well, interesting. So, hey, while, while we continue our discussion, if anybody has any questions for Michael Torres, uh, hit us on the ch in the chat. If you're joining us on Facebook, remember, subscribe to the Pretend YouTube channel, where every now and then we're going to be doing uh, in live interviews like these. And... But yeah, so the next thing that that I wanted to talk to you about was, let's see, how do I do that? Oh, I messed it up. I was going to talk about Sherman's March to the Sea, and then I uh, completely, uh, instead of clicking on it, I, I took out the picture. But go ahead. So tell us about Sherman's March to the Sea. So when you treasure hunt or you try to explore history in, in any form, what you want to do is you want to follow routes of the army, you want to follow conflict or, or trade. Conflict or trade is what you want to follow. So if you follow the Union Army march to, to the south, into the Western theater, it ultimately ends with Sherman's march to the sea. Now- and Who's Sherman? And we just jumped in there. Who's Sherman? Tell us- uh... Sherman was a Union general and he was General Grant's right-hand man. And Grant, Grant and Sherman had a very good relationship as, as field commanders. And Sherman's famous for saying, he looked after, he looked 
I looked after him when he was a drunk and he looked after me and I'm paraphrasing. He looked after me when I was crazy. So he was the first real, he was the first American general to really embrace total, the, the, the total war, make the enemy hurt so bad and bleed them of resources to the point where they cannot fight. Now he, the way he did that was he burned everything. He raised the ground, burned plantations, um, any, any, in de, um, enslaved person he came across, he freed. And he, he's not the nicest guy in history. The, he, he did a lot of controversial things. The mass, the massacre at Ebenezer Creek or as yeah, Ebenezer Creek for one that, uh, that was pretty bad. He, uh, he got his army across and contraband, which was free people that was following his army were left on the other side and he burned the bridge. And he left him over there for the for the Confederates to massacre, but his only goal was to win the war. And he burned a path through Georgia, and he used deception. He used uh, his cavalry really well. He and he moved an army, a large army, very quickly and very far. And he's he's given a lot of credit for helping end the war between the states. So. I follow, I'm following his army and I'm following the march down to see what they left. And if we can get any insignia or um, any unit names out of there, we could prove that we're on the right trail. So where, where did you start? I have the map up. Uh, I so it starts off here in Georgia. What, uh, this is Savannah? I, yeah, I started in Savannah and I'm still making my way north. That's awesome. Dude, so many things. It's so funny because like one person in the chat goes, Javier, I really want to support you, but this guy thinks so highly of himself. Do do other people, is it just my listeners who 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 think this or or do other people come across you and be like, hey, this Michael Torres guy, he's like, is he a history buff or is he just, you know, talking big talk? Ah, I just get called an arrogant prick. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But is is that is that like a, a thing of the trade? You know, like if if I hang out with a bunch of, you know, journalists, they kind of have their own flair. Like, is that is that is that yeah. part of the history I, game? It, I, yeah, I, I, if you, I don't know if, how many archaeologists you guys have met, but they they also think pretty highly of themselves. Um, yeah. And I never claim to be an archaeologist. I'm not. I I just love doing this. I hey, so Amanda on Facebook just to. She says that she thinks you're intriguing and she's hooked. So you see, it's a, it's a mixed bag. <laughs> yeah. Which, so she said you're intriguing. So this is good. Oh. So we have a mixed bag. One person can't stand you and the other one thinks you're intriguing. So, hey, you know, 50-50, you're good. Story of my life. <laughs> so, all right. So one last the, thing that, <laughs> what was that? I'll put it next to my mommy issues. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, this is good. This is good. We got to get it out. This is, this is a mix between uh, a history show and like, you know, some baby drama, Maury Povich show. <laughs> All right. So tell me, tell me about the Camino Real. So the Camino Real is one of the original conquistadorian roads that goes from Mexico City all the way up through Colorado. And a lot of, and it's mostly desert and high desert. And a lot of, expeditions went missing on the way out to looking for El Dorado, essentially. And a lot of them went missing. I've counted up to I think 15 already. And I know there's more and I know there's mention of more. And it's, it's when, when you're, when you're looking for history, you, you need to you look for certain traits, like mostly geographically. So most of these trails were native trails. So most of them are Neolithic. So wh where would you go at the ending of the last ice age when, we the the seas the seas receded. Um, well, excuse me, I'm backwards. But so roughly about a hundred thousand, hundred fifty thousand years ago is kind of where you know these these trade routes were established or began to be established with you know the clover Clovis men coming down from the Bering Strait. So a lot of these are of the same period. And what do all humans need, especially in a desert? water right water. follow the old watering holes and you're not going to stray far from that 
you not unless you want to live. And I'll give you a, a really good example. Um, so in through New Mexico, there is a uh, little plateau called uh, Inscription Rock. And it's in Mel Pais, which means in Spanish, the Badlands. It's the only water in a, in a, for a significant amount of miles or a radius. It's the only water that is available. So everybody went there and they inscribed their name from the 1700s all the way to the early 19th, uh, 19th century. So I, I think it's a good theory and it makes sense. And you'll find stuff all around it. I might find mummies out there. I, I don't know. I, yeah, gold or silver, but some Kisadorian armor. <laughs> but it's amazing because you, you, you're on all these expeditions, and and you and I have always said that all these stories, if they're true, would make a fascinating like discovery type show. I mean, you've these are uh, what was that? You've seen the video, yeah. And you know, but I can't help but wonder. You know, what do you do when you find these artifacts? Do you keep them for yourself? Do you sell them? Is that how you make money? It's a, it depends. Uh, if I really like it, I keep it. If it's really historically significant, I keep it. If it's like a bar of gold or a bar of silver, I'm going to sell it because the intrinsic value is just there. You know, uh, and I have I found silver bars, silver bullion. I found gold bullion, uh, in, and I, I typically sell it. Uh, if I find coins, I keep them. Um, like on that Charleston wreck, I kept those coins. The the block the Confederate blockade runner, like yeah. I had on a hat of seated liberties, just tons of them. <laughs> That's awesome. I meant to tell you, I was just in the the Treasure Coast this just a couple of weeks ago, actually, yeah. um, or last week, um, and I meant to to Facetime you or something because I was like, this is you know this is the area right where all those ships uh sank and off of that coast yeah right? two treasure fleets one in 1733 and one in 1715. Two so it's not uncommon for like a kid to dig up and find something right oh they do it all the time all the time yeah. pieces of eight, eight uh pieces of four reals bullion a lot of jewelry uh ordnance there's cannons all over the place it's just yeah. it's a graveyard it's it, it's a tip of Bermuda triangle it's it's a ship graveyard the Straits yeah. of Florida are just littered with shipwrecks. Well, I, I want to take this moment to do a shameless plug for myself. So criminal conduct <laughs> is coming back next week. For those of you who are watching this, it's coming out uh, what, what, April 16th and it's our second season. It's going to be awesome. So and also subscribe to the YouTube channel. Those of you who are on Facebook, but uh, hit us up with some questions. Seriously, uh, uh, Michael Torres is here. How many times do you have a treasure hunter live where, where you could ask him anything, you know? <laughs> So tell me, man, like, what was it like, uh, you know, we talked in the show about how you got into this and you were telling me that your mom was into antiques and that's kind of how you got into it. But you're like a real history buff. I mean, like, what? tell me a little bit more about that. I grew up in Charleston and by American standards, it's an ancient city by America and it's a port city. It was one of it was the largest city and the largest port in the in the colonies at the time. Well, it previously it was one of the largest yeah. ports. Yeah, it's a deep water port and, and it's naturally protected, but it's old. It's ancient. It was a it was a medieval city. It was it was established in the 1600s. It, it it's ancient, uh, and you will find stuff everywhere. I found a a 40 pounder in the harbor when I was scuba diving when I was a child. Uh, you'll find Ming Dynasty pottery everywhere. Uh, you'll find Civil War rounds. You'll find Revolutionary era rounds. You'll find. A ton of stuff at the swamps. Francis Marion was there. Uh, General Lincoln was there. Um, there was plenty, plenty of battles fought all the way down to James Island, all the way to Savannah, and from Mount Pleasant. I mean, all the way inland to the up the Santee, up the Cooper, up the up, and even Fort Dorchester. That's colonial. Like it's just settlement after settlement, time after time, just layers of history on top of each other, and it's right there. It's just yeah. right. That's true. Yeah. I mean, those those cities are so beautiful. Savannah, Charleston, uh, even St. Augustine. Uh, I spent a lot of time there for for my other show. Uh, I'm going to get to Amanda's question real quick, but it, it reminded me about the pirate tunnels. We didn't talk about it because I couldn't get it into my presentation. But so in Savannah, you found these pirate tunnels and Charleston. are these or oh, Charleston? 
are these well established? Like, can anybody go to these pirate tunnels? Or where are they? No, uh, or is this a secret? <laughs> so, no, well, no. So Charleston was originally a walled city, and a lot of the har a lot of the harbor on the Cooper is all landfill. So they filled it in to, ex to extend the docks and and the land boundary. So the the tunnels are going to be within the old walled city, and every once in a while, a construction crew will accidentally uncover one. But you're gonna have to dredge it out. So you have to wait for them to dredge it out, and then you can get under there. Uh, it's the entrance I found was near King Street. That's I'll say that. And it it was accessible. Is it now? I don't know. But we have a pretty good idea of where they go and where some entrance. Yeah, uh, I mean, I watched the video. You have video. I just couldn't play it for some reason. But you have video of what appears to be a tunnel, and yeah. you're in it. But let me let me ask you, like. Pirate tunnel, like what was the purpose of these pirate tunnels? It was a smuggling tunnel. It, it they call it pirate tunnels, but smugglers. It was it was a way to get around tariffs. It was a way to, if you're wanted, to get out of the city. Uh, it was it was just the black market. It was a it was it it was economically driven. So if you wanted to smuggle anything without paying a tax, if you wanted to smuggle yourself out, if you wanted to not be found or you were going to do something nefarious and you didn't want people to see you traveling. You just ducked down to the tunnels and you were gone. That's cool. Um, Amanda on Facebook has a, a question. Do you know anything about Billy the kid? I, I don't, I know about him. Yeah. Yeah. But, but not, you haven't personally uh, done. No, explorations on him? no, not yet. That'd be fun though. So uh, Melissa with moms and murder wants to know what was your first treasure find ever? Yeah. Uh, the, that 40 pounder. Oh, the 40 pound cannon ball. Is that? When... Yeah. In Charleston Harbor. I was like 11. That's cool. That's awesome, man. I mean, you have such crazy stories. I know that you're, I mean, it, I wouldn't be surprised if I keep getting emails, you know, about you and, uh, you're such, you know, you're like a lightning rod. People, <laughs> you know, have so many opinions. Uh, but, um, <laughs> what, what's next, man? What's your next find? Um, Without giving a location, I am looking into the colonial expansion to the West. So what was once considered the frontier, uh, I want to travel the old Native American traveling by trade routes and through, again, what was once the frontier and see what I can find, see if I can find any any evidence that because I know that it was the French and Indian Wars were there, the uh, American Civil War, uh, the Revolutionary War, th this these areas saw a lot of action when we were such a young country. And even before, when we were just the even when we were just a colony, it saw a lot of action um, and it has a lot of big historical names associated with it. Daniel Boone, Jim Bowie. Uh, just a lot of these figures that were larger than life, but maybe we don't know that much about their personal life. We know the stories from the newspapers. And so are you going to actually do the hike yourself okay. or, or are you going to drive or what are you going to oh, do? Are you going to walk it? Yep. 16 miles a day. We, we, my crew has gotten to, to the point where we can do 16 miles a day on foot. That's cool. awesome. I have a high school. You just reminded me. I have a high school buddy who is on Instagram right now. He's walking from, he walked from Miami and he wants to walk all the way to Utah or something like that. He's like what? Instagram every day. And it's pretty cool. He's in in Alabama now. So um, I'll, I'll, if I remember his handle, I'll put it here so you guys can follow him. I got a question from uh, Chloe over on Facebook who says that her husband is a huge Oak Island fan. And yeah. she's wondering, or he's wondering if you have any thoughts on that mystery. I think I think what they found was an old filtration system. I think that was a water filtration, a, an ancient water filtration system. But I think it's a because of the palm trees and the amount of the type of rubble, amount of rubble that was in those tunnels, and the fact that they had when they collapsed onto them so fast. I, my personal opinion is that I think it's a water filtration, an ancient water filtration system, because you need there wasn't. I don't think there's a lot of fresh water on that island. So Oak Island, if I remember correctly, is that near Nova Scotia? Yeah. I'm not, uh, yeah. you see, I'm <laughs> very proud, but that's all I remember. And I remember that there's a mystery. What, tell, tell me about it again. They, they believe that the Knights Templar after uh, 
the what, 13 in the 1300s the french king uh ordered their basically it was a french king ordering their execution but the the vatican sided with them because they were extremely powerful they had come up with international banking systems they the french king owed them a ton of money and he wiped them out one day and that's where we actually get friday the 13th as an unlucky number ah nice. uh, i don't know this well um Amanda on Facebook says that uh, stop by El Paso anytime you have a place to crash. So what? there you go. <laughs> I might hit you up on that. <laughs> she, he might, he might hit you up on that. Um, and uh, man, it, it was so awesome to have you here. It was cool because, you know, it, it was like a history lesson. Um, I know that you and I have talked about a lot of these finds offline, but it's, it was cool to kind of bring it all back and, and share with the audience things that you didn't hear on the episode. And if you are curious, if, you, if you're just stumbling on this right now, you don't know who Michael Torres is and you haven't listened to the episodes, it's called The Treasure Hunter on Pretend. You can find it uh, four episodes really fascinating the guy is um it's all about this battle between this this uh penny stock corporation that that is a treasure finding company and michael torres who who claims he found this peruvian burial mask and and the drama that ensues is <laughs> i gotta tell you i was worn out by the end of that like oh, i was worn out yeah, I remember having conversations with you after each episode and being like, this guy, you know, like, I, I was always nervous, like, uh, hey, Michael, what would you think about uh, this week's episode? I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> which is funny, because I, I would have never thought that you would think that those episodes were good, you know, because, <laughs> well, because some of them were critical about you. If, if somebody's not talking trash, you're not doing it right. <laughs> And is that because I, I see that, you know, some people live by that model, you know, that hey, any kind of attention is good attention. And, and so you didn't mind that at all, huh? Well, I it's more of a fortune favors the bold kind of a thing. If if you're not getting hated on, you're not doing it right, especially in this line of work. And I, you're doing it right, apparently, because <laughs> getting a lot of hate, but a lot of love. I think Amanda offered you a place to stay. So I think we're Amanda. Thank you. Amanda. <laughs> Yeah. And Chloe, thank you for uh, saying that those were some interesting episodes. Uh, yeah, they, they were one of my favorites, too. When I uh, found out about it, I really thought it was going to be one episode because uh, I was like, how much can we actually talk about this? But then it just kept coming and coming. Oh, yeah. And, oh, yeah. It got hairy there for a little bit. Yeah. You, well, I'm glad you, you were like, there's no way this could be true. And it was like, oh, this is true. Hmm. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, a lot of the, the things with Seafair was interesting. Actually, I would love to check on their stock. What What is their stock? Are they still around? Uh, uh, Let's yeah. do a live check. Uh, I should have done this before the show. What was that? FRX. I think they're like... SFRX. All right, let's see. Survey says, oh, they're still around, and they're still 0. 0.0058 of a penny. So... They're still around, but uh, <laughs> not doing too great. But hey, you know, yeah. well, hopefully they'll find that big ship, right? 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 Yeah. Well, anyways, man, we're gonna wrap this thing up. Unless anybody has any more questions, but um, if you do, and this broadcast is over, hit me up. I'll get the questions to Michael and get them answered to you. But man, thank you so much for for spending Saturday with me. Yeah, no problem. I just got a text from somebody that's watching it. Oh, yeah. What'd they say? What's the, is that Ming Vaz behind you? Oh, the, the, the bottle. Oh, okay. So, so this is actually Chin Dynasty. Ah. This is, and it's signed. Uh, let's see where you at. It's hard to see. I see the, okay. So I see the, the, the characters. Yeah. Oh. So this is 1600s to 1911. This was this is actually from 1730s, and it and he asked, "How do you tell?" So, so the signature on the bottom that I showed you, the first one, the first character, you read them down, uh, right, left, right to left, uh, yeah. vertically. So the first, the first, uh, sorry, I'm new at this. So the first is da. There the first go. character is da, which is big or great. The second one is Qin Dynasty, and then the re the the era in which it was made, the, the Imperial Kiln, and the the period. This 
this was 1730s to 1740s, and this was actually it would be tragic if you dropped it right now. I know. <laughs> so, so this is actually was made for the Ottoman Empire. It's it looks Turkish, right? And it's made extremely. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. It has a lock on it, actually. Oh, really? Like if you screw it on, it it actually stays on. Yeah, by these two little lips. So that's pretty cool. This was contracted out because Chinese pottery was like the the thing to have, and this was contracted out for the Ottoman Empire. So that's actually that was made for the. I think it was, and honestly, I think how it got to the states was it was a it was a spoil of war from probably World War One. Yeah. yeah, I had to guess. Yeah. That's cool. Well, hey, man. Awesome. Thank you so much again for spending Saturday with us and uh, answering all of our questions. And and uh, I'll hook you up with Amanda. <laughs> you guys could. <laughs> Amanda's Airbnb. But hey, thank you so much. And remember, catch the Treasure Hunter episodes on Pretend if you haven't listened to it. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. And Michael Torres has an Instagram channel. It's kind of in hiatus right now, but maybe he'll get it back one day. What, what's your handle? Uh, it's the black dive underscore, but I, I'm, I'm locked out of it right now. So I'm going to have to start. You new- can't find this password. Isn't that funny? He could find Ming dynasty no, no, and pottery. And he can't find his damn password. <laughs> it's not that I can't find it. They want to verify me and I can't get into my old email account to verify. Yeah. So Instagram, yeah. If, you're, if you're, uh, if you're, if you're watching, can you let me back? I don't think they're watching. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Well, hey, take it easy. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye, guys. Thanks for watching.